I awakened to the sound of birds chirping happily in the middle of the night. My alarm didn't ring. I realized I was awake long before it had a chance to violently pull me out of comfort of my sleep. A deep purple sky after a cold night melted into thick white mist, which covered the hills and wheat fields in the village. The bittersweet nostalgia, a place that is reminiscent of a home that doesn't exist anywhere in this physical world. A place that my heart longs for deeply, yearning to stay there forever. I take in the crisp morning air, breathe through the change of seasons, watching mist evaporate into a hot summer day as the bright orange sun rises above the cloud. A life that's as whimsical as can be, and it draws you into its sweet, dreamlike melancholy. It's not sad, not happy, it's beyond all that. Perhaps it's just a part of being human. I can only describe, but not name any of these feelings, this life, this dream that I find myself surrounded with as I walk through the fragrant meadows and soft, dewy fields. I keep wondering how will this dream continue, eager to see what happens next. I feel as though I've been asleep all this time and can only hope that it won't get interrupted by yet another morning alarm. Why? The question I always liked to ask, to great disdain of teachers and other people who ever had attempted to explain something to me. I still ask that question often, but I realized that, perhaps, there is no real need to get the answer every single time. Why did I wake up at 4am? Why did I jump out of bed to meet the sunrise? Why did I leave my comfortable city life, full of opportunities, to live slowly in the village. Why did I pick up gardening? Why do I wear pretty dresses everywhere I go? <laughs> Just because. In this season of my life, these are the things that make me feel good. They make me feel alive. Living as fully as possible is just about the only thing we can really do. So the question isn't really why, but why not? If I'm very honest, I don't have any survival skills. I'm not good at building things or sewing or making sure plants grow and live long. I always mess something up, but I still end up trying and trying and failing and trying again. It's just when something really begins to interest me, no matter how bad I am at it, for some reason I just keep doing it. And maybe, only maybe someday improve. But that's okay. I only very much later in my 20s realized that the result does not matter that much. Okay, maybe it does, but it's not the ultimate goal. I mean, I spent 11 years of my life playing piano every single day, only to forget all about it. But I do believe that it wasn't in vain. It has given me a deeper appreciation of beautiful, heightened senses, ability to hear and see things like I wouldn't be able to before, and to double-jointed flexible fingers, which sometimes go out of control of my videos. But it's not about the potential career piano playing could have given to me, how practical it is to everyday life, or how good I became at it. Of course, there were all the possibilities to make a career out of it, but I chose not to. Was this time wasted? Not a bit. It's the process of doing it that made me perhaps a slightly more interesting person. You don't have to be good at anything but trying new things, doing whatever sparks your interest. It can never be in vain. Hence why I do believe that romanticizing your life can be powerful. 
Romanticizing doesn't mean living a fake, delusional life. Of course, most of the time all of our lives are pretty much mundane. We struggle, grieve, work, fail, succeed, win or lose all the time. And the beauty is, we are all so similar but so very much different in our experiences. I recently found out that I'm not the only one who goes on hikes wearing dresses. There are others just like me. And while to some it might be crazy, uncomfortable, weird, to me wearing jeans or sweats sounds like an idea of torture. But still, my experience doesn't invalidate yours. Where I find peace, you may find bugs and annoying noises. Where you find inspiration, I may see mundanity. Where you strive, I might wither. This makes our experiences so similar in their differences. I believe it's a matter of what grounds you, what helps you stand on your own two feet, what calms you, betters you, and helps you grow into the human you want to be. You are bringing yourself everywhere you go. Sometimes people expect to come to places, move to a new city, or escape into nature to become a new person. They think the place will make them that but then leave disappointed, seeing that it wasn't anything like others told them it would be. Perhaps a simple advice would be to not take everything someone shares on the internet at the face value. The most beautiful city in the world might be too loud and suffocating to some, while others will find life in it. The most picturesque village in the countryside sometimes smells like nothing but cow poop. What you bring with you is what you will come with. You will have a deep, emotional and valuable experience anywhere if that's what you seek, but you still have to see it through your own eyes and experience it yourself. I romanticize things simply because that's how I see them. That's what I feel, the music that I use, the times of the day I go out in. I create it all for myself because that's how I want to live at this current moment. That's my experience and yours won't necessarily be the same, but I want to carry across a message. Life is beautiful. Just like Miyazaki once said, I would like to make a film to tell children it's good to be alive. To be alive, to truly feel alive, mornings don't necessarily need to start at 4am in the middle of a misty wheat field. It's not about being aesthetically perfect or having a certain face or living in a certain place. It's simply paying attention to the detail, putting intention in all the things you do, noticing subtleties and intricacies of the mundane. How beautifully milk curls and dances when you pour it into a cup of dark coffee. How tea leaves open up in a mug. New spring flowers that appeared on the side of the road you take every day to work. Laying in a freshly washed and made up bed. Enjoying the rain from the comfort of your home whilst listening to the sound of raindrops patter on the windowsill. Inventing a delicious meal from whatever is left in your fridge at the end of the week smiling at strangers or puppies on the street. The beauty of life really is in the detail we so often overlook. You can seek and find beauty you need anywhere you go if that is the intention that you come with.